-hmm. a report's being published today into sexual exploitation in Newcastle. Is this just happening in Newcastle? No, of course not. I think Newcastle's one of the areas of the country where they've got a grip of it. The sanctuary teams across Northumbria have done some excellent work, but of course not every city, many villages, many towns, exploitation's happening, sadly. Who particularly would be at risk of sexual exploitation? I think traditionally, classically, children are seen. I mean, the, the whole C in CSE, child sexual exploitation, but absolutely that's not the case. Vulnerable people is what exploiters will target. And teenagers are often vulnerable because they're separating from their parent or parent substitute. Um, but if you understand that it's the vulnerabilities that the exploiters are targeting, you then understand that people don't cease to be vulnerable because they cease to be children. Lots of adults are also exploited. And if you've got a friend or a relative who you think might be sexually exploited, would they be giving off any signs at all? It's really difficult to give checklists. Often the checklists of exploitation in, in young people, for example, would, would mirror those of teenage behaviours. I think one of the things that I would say is if you're concerned, probably raise your concerns with someone, not necessarily with a vulnerable person themselves initially, maybe with a professional, a social worker, a police officer, um, speak to them about your concerns. The report published today focuses on Newcastle. Is there anything unique about what's happened in Newcastle? I think one of the main uniquenesses of Newcastle is the very much the focus on vulnerable adults being exploited. I think until the work that was done at such a grand scale in Newcastle, I don't think across the country that exploitation of vulnerable adults was really being recognised was happening by the same people that were exploiting the children. So yeah, absolutely, the stuff around Newcastle and, and, the, and the work of the sanctuary teams has been incredible around the tenacity of the social workers and the police officers going back, the, the not giving up, recognising that vulnerable people were being harmed and that those people needed that support and needed, um, needed help to get out of those situations. And obviously it's a report about Newcastle, but do you think there will be learning in this for other towns and cities? I hope so, absolutely, I hope so. And around some of those things about the, the, the absolute necessity of professionals recognising the vulnerabilities, recognising the harm, going back and going back and going back and sticking in there with it. But definitely the stuff around the transition, the stuff from this isn't just happening to adolescents and young people, this is also happening to vulnerable adults. And if someone is at home now watching this video who think they may be being sexually exploited and you're saying it's not straightforward, people may not recognise that, mm -hmm. what advice would you give them? Try and speak to somebody. Try and speak to somebody or reach out. There are lots of resources online. Uh, reach out to somebody. Even if you do it in a way that you say, I don't want you to tell the police right now because this isn't only something that the police can help with. As, as the sanctuary teams have, have, have been testament to. The social care response was incredible for many of those vulnerable people and has helped many of them get out of those situations. Some of them without ever involving the police.